Well, so when I when I work with clients that have a deep fear of rejection, it's interesting. You know, I specialize in anxiety, and so I certainly see this a lot. And it it, it what's interesting is that it shows up um, in two ways. Uh, that I see it mostly. Um, the first is that with socially anxious people, they are so afraid of rejection. They're so afraid of being judged. They they assume and imagine that people are judging them, which by the way, people are because human beings are pretty judgy, but they're so worried about being rejected and not not being able to to fit in that they will avoid that altogether. So sometimes we see a fear of rejection and it comes out in avoidance. So I'm not going to take that risk. I'm not going to uh, uh, even order in a restaurant or I'm not going to uh, go out anywhere where I may might meet new people. Um, I'm not even going to email my professors at college because you know they could read my email and reject what I'm saying. So I see that as in avoidance. And then the other way that I see it is um, that you're you're so fearful of rejection and socially anxious people don't generally do this. They tend to be more sort of pull out of it. But there's another way that it shows up where you're so afraid of rejection that you will tolerate behavior in people that you shouldn't tolerate. So you don't really have good boundaries. You don't have the ability to say, well, I don't deserve to be treated that way. So I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to continue this relationship or I'm not going to stay in this job or I'm not going to go to that gym where people say things that make me feel uncomfortable. Um, and so it's, it's interesting that you see it show up in those two ways. Um, so, so what, what we need to do or what we want to do to help people with this fear of rejection is that, first of all, how do you tolerate judgment? Because human beings judge all the time. We are social creatures. We are designed to judge. We have, you know, we, we, we are dependent upon each other for our survival. So we're always sort of feeling each other out. So how do we step in and tolerate the judgment of others? And sometimes it's positive and sometimes it's negative. Sometimes it's accurate. Sometimes it's inaccurate. But we don't really have a lot of control over that. We can certainly control our own behavior. So how do we step in and do that? And then how do we help people who have a fear of, of rejection develop a better sense of boundaries? How do they, how can we help them articulate what they find acceptable and what they find unacceptable? Interestingly, with people who are afraid of rejection, oftentimes they know intellectually where they would draw the line. They know what the boundaries are. You know, somebody might say, well, I'm not going to be in a relationship where I am physically abused or I'm not going to take a job where they're going to pay me 70 uh, percent of what my coworker is being paid when I have more experience so they can articulate what the boundaries are. But in the moment they are very quick to discard those boundaries or negate those boundaries or lose touch with those boundaries because being rejected, the fear of being rejected becomes the primary motivator for them making decisions. So the way that you might um, see that is you might be talking to somebody who's in a bad relationship or in a job that they don't really find gratifying or they have a boss that's not really, you know, whatever, you, you, you get the gist. And how do they know where they draw the line? And then they really need language, concrete language, to set a boundary. And so giving somebody the words, giving them the script, being very concrete in your teaching about that is, is really helpful.